Hello. Today I'd like to talk about a discussion about the factory method pattern. I'm trying a new format and I want to get a sense of what you guys think. Do you like these kinds of videos? So, but, but wait till I'm done with this one and then let me know. The factory method pattern was a, is a pattern that was first introduced in the the Gang of War book or the Design Pattern book or the Bible and it has been mistaken for the factory pattern which is not in that book. So this discussion is not only going to be explaining the factory method pattern but also you'll probably get a sense of why there's a confusion between the factory method pattern and the factory pattern and uh, anyway so let's let's see how this goes. I'm going to paraphrase from the from the cough book. Define an interface. Hold that thought. Define an interface to create an object. Hold that thought. And let subclasses hold that thought. Decide what instance, hold that thought, to create. <laughs> okay, I'll recite it once again, this time just continuous and see if you get it. Define an interface to create an object, but let subclasses decide what instance to instantiate. No? Don't get it? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. The factory method pattern is, in my opinion, the most beautiful design pattern. The most beautiful, the most elegant design pattern ever. Now I realize that beauty is in the eye of, of the beholder. And I'm hoping that by the end of this video, you'll have the same opinion as I do with regards to the factory method pattern. However, before you can get there, I need to explain this further, the, the definition in the, as from the golf book. So for the rest of this video, I'm going to break this down piece by piece. So are you holding on to those four things I asked you to, to hold on to? Okay, just keep them still. Write them down or do something. You're going to have to bank on those four things. And so hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to get it, right? Alright, so define an interface. What interface? No, they didn't mean interfaces. They didn't say interfaces, they said interface. This book uses interface a lot in many, many places in the book. But at no point in time does the word interface mean interfaces as we know them as classes and interfaces. Huh? How do I know that? No silly, I didn't write the book. The book was first published in 1995. It was probably written a couple of years before that or during the you know year or two years prior to that. And in 1995, we didn't have interfaces in the in software programming languages. So there you have it. So but then what does interface mean in this case? Well, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm interfacing with you. I interface with this person. I interface with this UI, the user interface. <laughs> it's the English meaning of the word interface, not the software meaning of it. In C++, and this book has examples, uh, code examples in C++ and Smalltalk. In C++, an interface, and they use, they still use it, C++ does not have interfaces as we have them in C Sharp and Java and other languages, but they still use the word interface to mean an abstract base class. By interface, in the context of this discussion, it means a public method that allows you to interact with the class. All right? So define an interface. Define a method. 
to create an object. What object? No, no, okay, I'll explain it. Let's make things a little more concrete. Let's say you have a car class, all right? Define a method on the car class to create an object. What object? Yeah, exactly, uh, some other object. So let's say a car has a dependency on an engine. All right, so define a, define a method. So I'm swapping interface for method. Define a method on the car class to create an engine. Right? So two of those thoughts that you had held on to, hopefully, have been addressed. But let subclasses decide. Subclasses of what? What subclasses? Of the vehicle, of the car, yes, exactly. So let subclasses of the car class decide. How do we in software, in programming, software programming languages, let subclasses decide? Exactly, virtual methods. So now this method that allows us to create an engine on the car class needs to be virtual and protected. Why protected? Well, first of all, the descendants have to have access to it. So it needs to be the public or protected. It can't be public. Be huh? oh, let me get there. There is in C sharp and other languages as well, there's a guideline that says public methods should not be virtual. So that's it, you know, simple. So it's a, it's a protected method. So define a protected virtual method on the car class to create an engine and let subclasses of the car class decide what instance to instantiate. What instance of what to instantiate? Exactly, an engine. So in other words, the engine has a hierarchy. But do you miss the first one? The car class also has a hierarchy. So there's a family of cars and there's a family of engines. So define a method on the car class to create an engine, but let subclasses of the car class decide what instance of the engine class to create. There are two hierarchies, two, two hierarchies at play. Now, if you ever hear anyone define or explain or write about in a book, and there are many books that have made this mistake or don't, don't quite get it, that does not involve at least two hierarchies, at least two hierarchies, they are not describing the factory method pattern. They are describing the factory pattern. Now the factory pattern is define an interface to create an object. That's it. That's the factory pattern. The factory pattern just has a class that has a method to allow you to create another class. And that's that. There's no polymorphism involved in that, in that class, in that design, in that pattern. That's a very useful pattern except it doesn't, it's not the factory method pattern as defined in the golf book. The factory pattern does not do all the rest of the stuff that we talked about. So there's only this one class that allows you to create an instance of some, some other class. That one class has got no hierarchy. Unlike in our case, the car class has also got a hierarchy and the engine in this case has also got a hierarchy. So there are two hierarchies at play. Now, why did I say at least two? If a car class has other dependencies, let's say a car also has tires and wheels and seats and steering. So every time some class has dependencies, then it should use a factory method pattern to create each of those dependencies. Now in the factory method pattern, the convention for the method names 
is a prefix of make. So make engine would be this first one. You know, define and uh, define a method called make engine. Make tire, make wheel, make seat, make steering, make lights, you know, all those things. So for each of the dependencies, there's a factory method. <laughs> Not that factory method, silly. We're talking about the factory method pattern, but there's a method, the factory method. <laughs> Get it? So you understand why the factory and the factory method pattern get so confused. And in fact, it's sad because, as I said earlier, this is the most beautiful, the most elegant design pattern I've seen. But it's lost. We've forgotten about it. Why? Because we never understood it. We confused it with the factory. And so this pattern just disappeared as if it's, it's the factory. It's not. Okay. So for every dependency, you're going to create or define, sorry, an instance, a method called the factory method. For each of those dependencies, each of them will have a prefix of make something or the other. And then the reason I actually use this convention is because I can distinguish between a factory. So the factory will have a method called create something. Whereas the factory method pattern, if you're implementing that pattern, you'll use the make something convention. So. <laughs> I know that you know when I talk to people, when I'm interviewing people, or we having discussions, and I'm seeing you know people's code like all over the place. They're using just interfaces everywhere for everything, and I'd ask them like, so why do you guys use so many interfaces? And the standard retort to that would be something like, well, you should be programming to interface, not implementation. <laughs> it turns out that. This statement, this, it's a very powerful statement, program to interface and not implementation, was also in the Goff book. It's the same book that had the statement, and there's another one as well. So when they say program to interface and not implementation, they didn't mean interfaces. And just because you're using interfaces doesn't imply that you're adhering to the understanding of programming, program to interface and not implementation. Well, now that we've gone down that rabbit hole, let, let me explain that part. Program to interface and not implementation. What they're saying is, so of course, certainly you have a hierarchy of some class, right? So, there's a, so you're using polymorphism. But the correct way to use polymorphism is besides having a class and a hierarchy and overridden methods and different implementations in each of these descendants, is the code on the call side, the code that is using these classes. Right? That is the important part. That is where this thing plays up. Program to interface, there's an write the co code in the call site in terms of the base class and only the base class. The code on the call site should not know anything about any of the descendants. All the code knows or understands, is aware of, has a reference to, is that base class. And every line of code from that point forward can only address or talk to or use the base class's methods. That's it. Program to interface, which is the abstract base class from the C++ language of C++ vocabulary, and not implementation, meaning not the descendants. You don't need to know, don't want to know the descendants. The code on the call site has no understanding, awareness, or references to descendants. It's programming purely to the base class, and that's what program to interface and not implementation means. Okay, going back to the factory method pattern. Now, I have a video on, on the same channel on YouTube There's uh, called the factory method pattern, where you can see all the code that uh, has been discussed here, and I discuss it in that video as well. And that, where are you going? Not now, silly. When, when I'm done. <laughs> All right. And there's another video on polymorphism. There's two parts, parts one and part two, so you might want to watch that with regards to polymorphism. And in that video, I also discuss this program to interface. I told you to just hang on a bit. I discuss the program to interface and not implementation part. All right. So back to the factory method pattern then. This, 
this definition, it really gets me because I can show people, and, and, you know, I mean, it's not like I was smarter than anybody else because I learned, it took me a long time to understand that definition, you know, define an interface to create an object and let subclasses decide what instance to instantiate. It is so succinct. <laughs> it is so beautifully distilled down to two sentences to say everything, but nobody gets it. It's only after you understand the factory method pattern do you understand the definition of it. But the problem is you're looking at this definition at the time of trying to understand it and nobody gets it. And it's sad because this pattern, as I said, in my opinion, is the most beautiful pattern, most elegant pattern. But we've lost it. The software field has seems to have just forgotten it because they've confused it with that you know, simplistic factory pattern. So hopefully this discussion will have opened up your eyes. And listen, hey, if you've gotten so far and you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. And if you've gotten so far and you've liked this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know if you like these kinds of videos. And maybe we can have other discussions. Let me know or ask me about, you know, talk, talk about something else, something that I know, okay? Because I can't talk about things I don't know. And I'll try and make these kinds of videos where we can have, or I can discuss, I can give you my opinion. <laughs> All right, until then, I'll see you next time.